Good evening and welcome to California Today. I'm Daniel Hall. Let's take a look at today's stories. California is seeing record levels of snowfall this December, but one expert warns that it's not yet enough to end the state's drought. A coalition of California groups have actively opposed the idea of drug injection sites in the state. The coalition recently sent a letter to the White House asking for support to prevent such sites from being established. On Wednesday, the federal government approved California's overhaul of the nation's largest insurance program for low-income and disabled residents. Officials say the decision will allow Medicaid money to be spent on housing-related services as California struggles with homelessness and a lack of affordable housing. In a statement, Governor Gavin Newsom said, We're making Medi-Cal, which provides health care to one-third of all Californians, the most comprehensive, robust such program in the entire country. Starting New Year's, California will expand what had been a limited whole-person care pilot program to eligible Medi-Cal members statewide. According to officials, the goal of the new approach is to address underlying societal conditions, particularly in populations with fewer health care services. New services include treatment for substance abuse, expanded dental benefits, and restored coverage of chiropractic services for Indian Health Service and tribal facilities that were eliminated in 2009. The state also expects approval from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services early next year to expand services for those involved in the criminal justice system before they are released from incarceration, so they continue receiving those services in the community. California's Medicaid program offers government-funded insurance to people 50 and over, and 25 and younger, regardless of their immigration status. California has the nation's largest Medicaid program. Officials are clearing out homeless encampments in Los Angeles' Koreatown. Full encampment clearing will begin next week. Los Angeles' Council District 13 is preparing to clear large homeless encampments in parts of Koreatown. On December 23rd, Councilman Mitch O'Farrell's office put up flyers to notify tent residents of a major cleaning on Tuesday. L.A. Sanitation began cleaning up one of Koreatown's largest encampments at Chateau Park. Koreatown residents have said they felt unsafe in their neighborhoods due to an increase in crime. One said that their mailman was assaulted. Others, such as the activist group K-Town for All, criticized the timing of the enforcement. They said there's a spike in COVID-19 cases and that shelter capacity is limited. A full encampment clearing is scheduled on January 5th. A UCSF doctor says COVID-19 could be similar to the flu by early next year, but encourages people to continue being careful amid the current rise in cases. In a series of Twitter posts on Wednesday, UCSF doctor Bob Wachter said there are some positive trends despite the recent rise in COVID cases and the Omicron variant. He wrote that COVID could be more like the flu by early February, with a majority of the U.S. vaccinated or protected by antibodies. Wachter says vaccines prevent hospitalization and new oral antiviral pills hold great hope. He predicts that people would be able to go back to normal in six to eight weeks. Tesla is recalling certain Model 3 and Model S vehicles due to safety concerns. The total number of recalled vehicles is close to half a million. All Model 3 cars from the years 2017 to 2020 and Model S cars between 2014 and 2021 are included in the recall, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration announced Thursday. Tesla said the recall is due to a cable for the car's backup camera that can be worn out and fail to transmit images to the driver's main console. Tesla submitted a safety recall report on December 21st, saying over time, repeated opening and closing of the trunk lid may cause excessive wear to the cable that provides the rear view camera feed. The report added that the loss of a rear view camera display may increase the risk of collision. With both car models, Tesla says it is not aware of any crashes, injuries or deaths caused by the defect. Tesla discontinued the problematic trunk harness at the end of 2022 for Model 3 cars. All 2021 Model 3 vehicles have a different harness design. On Thursday, Tesla's stocks were down 1.1%. For many years, California has been trying to pass laws that would allow the creation of drug injection sites. A coalition of groups have actively opposed the idea. The coalition sent a letter to the White House asking for support. Here's entities Cynthia Kai with more. A coalition of 11 groups against drugs sent a letter to President Biden and U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland last Wednesday, asking for their support in preventing drug consumption and injection sites. 
the coalition expressed concern about Senate Bill 57, which would allow sanctioned safe consumption sites in California, where people can inject illicit drugs under medical supervision. The letter urged the enforcement of federal drug laws, saying all levels of government are responsible for protecting people from drug abuse and overdose deaths. The safe consumption sites are a bad idea is that we don't need consumption sites. What we really, really need is more safe, sobering sites. Every day in the emergency department, I discharge patients who suffer from a substance use disorder. SB 57 is not the first bill attempting to establish such sites. The speakers cited the rejection of Assembly Bill 186. In 2018, former Governor Jerry Brown even issued a very strong veto letter reiterating that allowing the use of illegal and destructive drugs will never work. This is certainly not a partisan issue. Then Governor Brown returned AB 186 without his signature in 2018. Brown stated in a note to legislators that he does not believe in establishing government-sanctioned injection sites for illegal drug use. Members of the international community, whose areas have already established such injection sites, provided feedback on their effect. The writings that's about the European injection sites there are no real evidence uh, that they have lowered death rates or that they have lowered the, the rates of criminal behavior or, or crime. Actually, in some places, the most places, uh, the death rates are higher. Carlson says drug injection and consumption sites are not the solution to drug overdoses. Drug consumption rooms is a whole other thing. I would say that it's not a solution, but it's more like a, an illusion of a solution. Canada also has drug injection sites. A speaker from Canada said the sites increased drug consumption. So why such a soaring an increase in the number of homeless people around Vancouver downtown east side? Why? Because that injection site has become a huge magnet drawing drug users, not only drug users, but also traffickers. Proponents and authors of the bill say such sites can reduce drug overdoses and addiction. In the many years that these programs have been in existence around the world, 170 of them, there has never, not once, been a recorded overdose death in any of these facilities. Some speakers said a better alternative is treatment and rehabilitation programs to help addicts remove their addiction to drugs. There are at least a thousand people in Canada doing honest, decent, wonderful recovery work, and they serve 10 to 20,000 addicts on any given day. And I would estimate that 25 to 50 percent of all the people who go into recovery actually find recovery. He says rehabilitation is not easy and relapses can occur, but in his experience, works. The coalition will now wait for the state assembly to hear SB 57 after the legislature reconvenes on January 3, 2022. Cynthia Kai, NTD News, California. The California Department of Water Resources gave an update on the recent snowfall. Despite record-breaking numbers this month, the drought is still not over. California has seen record-breaking snowfall in the Sierra Nevada mountains this December. The Department of Water Resources conducted its first winter survey today. Our survey today recorded a snow depth of 78.5 inches and a snow water content of 20 inches. That results in 202% of average to date and 82% of the April 1 average at this location. Despite the large amount of snow, the water level hasn't increased since the last measurements were taken in April. California is still facing drought conditions. Even though rain and snow are currently above average, this drought is still far from over. Uh, most of our reservoirs are still below average and our groundwater is still recovering. Last spring, the manual survey recorded 56 inches of snow depth and a snow water equivalent of 21 inches. De Guzman said that today's measurement was similar to years before the drought began in 2013. Meanwhile, the U.S. drought monitor showed improved drought intensity compared to last week. De Guzman added that despite the high levels of rain and snow in California, water shortages are still present. 
Former actor and California governor Arnold Schwarzenegger finalized his divorce with NBC News journalist Maria Shriver. A decade after breaking up, Schwarzenegger and Shriver are officially divorced. The former couple settled their divorce in a Los Angeles court Tuesday. Shriver first filed in 2011 after Schwarzenegger admitted to the public that he fathered a son with the family's longtime housekeeper. The former California governor and Shriver were married for 25 years before calling it quits. They have four kids together. Now to NTD's Thomas Christian for an update from the world of sports. I'm Thomas Christian, and this is the California Today Sports Roundup. Chemizie Metu connected on a buzzer-beating three-pointer on an inbounds play that began with 3.8 seconds remaining, giving Sacramento a win over visiting Dallas. De'Aaron Fox paced a balanced Sacramento attack with 16 points. Harrison Barnes and Davion Mitchell followed with 14 each. Tyrese Halliburton had 12 to go with a game-high 10 assists. Metu and Marvin Bagley III scored 11 apiece. Kings 95, Mavericks 94. Marcus Morris Sr. finished with 23 points and 10 rebounds against his former team to lead shorthanded Los Angeles against host Boston. Luke Kennard, Eric Bledsoe, and Terrence Mann added 17 apiece for the Clippers, which had lost two straight and five of its previous six games. Clippers 91, Celtics 82. John ja Moran made a career-high six three-pointers and scored a season-high 41 points as Memphis rallied for its third straight win, beating visiting Lakers. Despite the loss, LeBron James tied his career-high with eight three-pointers and finished with 37 points, 13 rebounds, and seven assists for the Lakers. Russell Westbrook recorded his eighth triple-double of the season with 16 points, 10 rebounds, and 12 assists in the loss. Grizzlies 104, Lakers 99. The isolation period for fully vaccinated NHL players after a positive COVID-19 test has been cut from 10 days to five, provided they meet a set of guidelines the NHL and its Players Association said Wednesday. In order to leave isolation five days after a positive COVID-19 test, vaccinated players must not show a fever or other symptoms and return a negative PCR test. While the move applies league-wide, players in Canada, where the league this week postponed nine games due to attendance restrictions, may be subject to much stricter regulations. JT Miller scored on a breakaway 26 seconds into overtime as the visiting Vancouver Canucks extended their winning streak to seven games with a come-from-behind 2-1 victory over the Anaheim Ducks Wednesday. Thatcher Demko had 22 saves for the Canucks who defeated the Ducks for the first time in three tries this season. Sam Carrick scored a first period goal for the Ducks, and John Gibson, the goalie, made 35 saves. Ducks one, Canucks two. As always, I'm Thomas Christian, and thanks for tuning in. That's all for tonight. You can join us again on California Today every weekday at 8 p.m. If you have any news tips or ideas for the show, feel free to let us know. You can also find us on Twitter and Facebook. I'm Daniel Hall. Have a wonderful evening.